G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're gonna to be having a look at a plane that I've covered on the channel before, but I really, really like it, and honestly, it is definitely a plane that I just really love to gravitate towards when the matchmaker is fitting. And the matchmaker is about fitting right now, with the A-10 Warthog being at 10.0, and 10.0, 10.3 being very common. A lot of the 9.7s and 9.3s tend to get shafted. So, as a result, we have a really, really nice springing to life 8.7 once more. And of course, one of the best 8.7s in the game is the premium G91R4. This plane is fairly unassuming once you uh, have a quick look at it, but it might look like any ordinary G91 to you, maybe even like the pre-Siri or the R1. However, the R4 is a little bit special because it can carry four AIM-9Bs and you might be thinking that that is a bloody big missile for such a small plane and you would be right. This plane is really really small and relies on being lightweight so it might actually be counterintuitive at first to add weight in the form of four AIM-9Bs. These things aren't light and of course the pylons add weight and drag as well and the performance hit is actually quite substantial but you'll find that the way this plane is given these missiles it seems to benefit it in a couple of ways. The first notable way here is that its speed reduction means that it is later into the battlefield which uh, gives it a distinct advantage when your opponents start dogfighting, start turning, it means that you have, uh, let's just say, a little bit more of an opportunity to use your missiles. You aren't always forced into dogfighting straight away, you're not first on the battlefield, in fact, you're probably going to be one of the last on the battlefield if you play this way, and by this way, I mean in a climb at about 500 kilometers per hour, and uh, trying to get to about 3,000, 4,000 meters off to the side a little bit, just before picking off the players at high altitude and joining the battle. The way I like to play this plane is kind of different to the way I like to play top tier jets where I like to sort of get stuck in and uh, sort of peepo steer everywhere I go. You can't quite do that at this tier because especially with those four missiles, you're going to be weighed down quite substantially. Now, this plane is a premium and if you are liking what you're seeing and if you do want to grind through the German tech tree and if you would like to purchase this plane, you could do so by purchasing, I believe it's Golden Eagles, this plane. Uh, and if you want a discount on Golden Eagles, head to the link in the description below and uh, support the channel through the uh, Revenue Share program, which gives you guys a 3% discount and my decal in-game. That really, really helps the channel out. Honestly, you guys have no idea how much it adds up. I actually can't tell you how much I make through this, but of course, you know, it all goes back into the channel and uh, it does add up. Every cent really does. So thank you so much to everyone who uses that. Now, the G91 has these four missiles. And of course, like I've said, it has changed the performance of the plane quite significantly. Instead of looking at a 10, uh, like a thousand kilometer per hour top speed or a, you know, 1050 kilometer per hour top speed, you're more looking at an 800 in a straight line. And, you know, you can probably see a thousand kilometers per hour. It's just your acceleration will taper off so badly that, you know, you might, you just might not. You might have to throw it in a dive to get to that speed. And of course, like you can do that, but why would you waste the energy? Now, our first target here is a B-57, and you might be thinking 3.3 is a long distance for an AIM-9B, but have a look at the altitude. The altitude is really key here. The higher you go, the less dense the air is at altitude. So this gives your missiles a little bit more range, and of course, because your enemy is traveling so slow, you have a little bit more in the way of relative distance there. So you can actually pull higher shots and do a little bit more crazy shit at higher altitudes, which is why I like to start at high altitudes. Because once you use those missiles, you become a dogfighter. And of course, this plane exceeds at low altitude and it exceeds at dogfighting. So once you intercept all the interceptors, if you will, you have basically free reign on anything that's traveling particularly slow. Now, our engagement here against an F9F is going to be a little hairy. I'm going to dive above him, uh, dive above him, climb above him, because I noticed that he went down below. There's an F9F. I thought it was a Sea Fury for some reason, or a Sea Hawk, sorry. Uh, and uh, what I'm doing here is I'm doing what I do at top tier jets. You're going to try and wear the missile out because it tries to lead its opponents. And when you lead it, it snakes and uh, sort of destroys its energy. This is a very, very easy way to dodge missiles, and you can do this all the way from the AIM-9B to the AIM-9L to, who knows, maybe even the AIM-9X. 
So we're going to be turning around. Hopefully the Swift is going to sort of dive in. And I know the Swift compresses very hard, so he's not going to have a shot if he goes straight for me. But he's also going to be food for the German MiG-15 Biss here. And uh, this makes him turn around quite quickly. I'm going to slot in behind his 6 prep myself an AIM-9B, and hopefully he actually doesn't see me or doesn't notice me because he's paying too much attention to the MiG-15, and it looks like he's within a kilometer, which is like really, really nice striking distance here. And whilst the missile travels on its way, I'm going to turn my attention to the F-9F, who is going to dive down towards the MiG-15, send a missile, and I've just noticed this F-9F right down here. So I'm going to pop some flaps. I'm going to try and turn in nice and hard. I'm using my uh, keybinds here, and I'm going to not open up with the uh, missile, but I'm going to pick the guns here because I'm nice and close. It looks like he's practically stalled out, so this was a fairly straightforward kill, and uh, there's not really much to be said about this one here. I'm going to go in for the deflection shot on the F9F, but he's traveling a little bit quick, and the, uh, the rudder is a little bit funny on this plane where it sort of doesn't let you get amazing shots, especially at speed. But you also have to remember you only have four 50 caliber machine guns, so you don't really have much shade to throw at your opponents. It's more in the missiles and you're sort of working more towards getting your opponents into a precarious situation before just hailing them with bullets. Now I am using ground target rounds. I do find that the ground target belts work a lot better because they are sort of better at sniping uh, weak points. Uh, it looks like I've damaged something important on that plane. So I'm going to try and turn my attention to the other F9F because it looks like he's going to be going in for my friendly here. And it, he is indeed. So I'm going to turn around, make sure I'm not going to be in the F9F's uh, way. And I'm going to try and go in after this second one here. I can see that the first one is fairly well damaged. And I'm pretty easily slotting in behind the F9F-8 here because the F9F-8 is not really a great dogfighter. Uh, they can dump speed pretty quickly, and you have to be careful of that. But this plane has much better speed control than uh, a lot of other aircraft. It's got a fairly decent amount of acceleration, especially at low speed. Its air brakes are fairly good. Its energy retention is fairly good. It's a very well-rounded dogfighter. And so one of the things that you have to make sure of is that you use all of your tools at your disposal. I almost blew it here where I went in front of the F9F8's guns, but because he's so fat, I managed to sneak out behind him. Now I'm having to use a little bit of throttle control, so in order to sort of get in behind him, I do critical hit his tail control, and that is going to send him down to the ground. Uh, as you can see, I probably haven't realized that yet. And uh, there he goes. There's really not much to it. The F9F has pretty much blown it, and to be fair, the F9F is nowhere near as good a dogfighter as the uh, G91R4. And so I'm going to trundle on away to uh, maybe that F9F from earlier. You see, I'm not quite convinced that he's going to crash. I'm very, very convinced that he's just going to make it back to base. And that's another enemy that I have left to deal with it. You can see, even with two missiles and the remaining pylons from the total of four, I am not gaining my speed as quickly as I would like to. I'm running 20 minutes of fuel, which is adequate for this plane and I think is appropriate. Uh, I have plenty of ammunition left, and you can see that the way I've been using my ammunition is quite sparingly. I'm not going in all guns blazing and expecting to get kills. This plane requires a methodical approach. You have to start from the top and work your way down very methodically. Otherwise, you're going to end up sort of running out of luck, running out of energy, because those missiles really do weigh you down. They're basically your greatest armament in this case. They're, they're very powerful. They're exceedingly effective, uh, particularly against your uh, high altitude opponents and your slow opponents. Now you can see here, here's another ambitious missile. We're going in for the kill here. But I think we've gotten in close enough to the point where the F9F has uh, pretty much just blown it. And that is probably one of the most beautiful missile kills I've ever gotten. But I think we can do better than five kills. I think, I think we can do just a little bit better. Almost, almost double better. So, we're in, uh, I believe this is Kalkin Goal. This is uh, sort of up tier. I've got a Yak-38 here, and the Yak-38 looks like he is uh, sort of in a strange position here. He's going in for a little bit of a dive, but he's quite slow. And this allows me to get a shot on him. And uh, the missile, again, I'm up at altitude. I'm picking off fast or, sl oh, sorry, not fast. I'm picking off high altitude or very slow targets. In this case, the uh, uh, Yak-38 is quite slow. 
uh, and the MiG-17 here is not really paying attention. So I'm going to prep a missile nice and early. You can see that I'm not bleeding too much speed compared to some other jets. And uh, 1.4 is a fairly good altitude to, uh, sorry, fairly good distance to engage. And at 3.8 kilometers in altitude, there is plenty of uh, not so dense air for this plane or this missile to uh, do some zoomies away from its uh, home base and into its target, I suppose. Now, I'm down to two missiles, which gives me a little bit more dogfighting prowess, but I'm still not really going to be a huge match for anything that's super turny. Uh, I've also got to remember that I'm not particularly fast here, and uh, GAC-38, that's a 9.3. It's still going to be a formidable enemy. There are still R60s in play, potentially, and I really want to make sure I don't end up on the receiving end of that. The uh, GAC-38 has a bit of uh, a bit of trouble there in the form of my teammate in the J29 and the J29 will play an, a, a bit of a pivotal role later on in the match so keep an eye out for him I'm gonna try and engage this Yak-38 I do see the Yak-38 as the bigger threat and I don't really know where he's gone just yet so I'm gonna keep my eye out I'm gonna put my head on a swivel using my uh, free look there and uh, looks like I can't see him I'm gonna check the scoreboard to see if he's been killed uh, but no it just turns out the fight's gone over my head and behind me so <laughs> I'm gonna go chase that because the Yak-38 is potentially going to kill me and there's uh, you know there's plenty of enemies here to, ha to be had afterwards and uh, I can go and methodically kill them all when I am ready I also don't really want to leave this J-29 out because he's, you know, he's doing okay. He's doing a good job. He hasn't sacrificed his altitude or his energy yet. Uh, and it looks like he's doing a fairly good job. Now, I didn't really put two and two together at this point because surely if the J-29 was still alive after this long, the Ak-38 would have run out of missiles, but uh, didn't really put two and two together. And it looks like the uh, J-29 is in a little bit of, uh, bit of trouble here. He's going in for that Yak-38. He sends a missile to the Swift, but I don't believe it connects. Uh, and out of pure dumb luck, the Yak-38 just decides that he's going to do a little bit of a turn in front of me. Uh, it's almost close enough for guns. What do I think? It's probably going to go guns here, and it looks like guns are the answer. Going to set him on fire, maybe. I think that's what happens. Yes, I, I do set him on fire. And uh, now it's time to turn my attention to the Swift, because this guy's pretty much out of the match. Once these things get set on fire, it's pretty much game over. Uh, they end up being a bit of a, uh, a burnt sausage, uh, a burnt hover sausage, if you will. So the Swift at altitude is going to cause some problems. I'm pretty sure that is, you know, what I'm going to guess it's a Swift F7. If you see an opponent, just pretend that it is the most powerful version of that one. So, for example, if you see MiG-21, assume it's, uh, say, a MiG-21 BIS or a MiG-21 SMT or MF or something like that. Don't pretend that it's a PFM and then get surprised with an R60. You should always uh, sort of prepare for the worst and then uh, sort of be happy when you get the better. So we're going to be turning away from these opponents that are below us because I fear that they might pop up against me. It is a Swift F1, which is very nice. It's a little bit more bulky and it looks like he's going to come in underneath me. He's going to overblow his approach, but I don't have enough time to roll back and get some shots with the guns. I'm going to try... But nothing's really going to land because at 1.2, even the uh, M3 50 cals are pretty much toast. And it looks like this guy's just going to play the running game. So I'm not going to bother. I'm not going to have a bar of it. And then just go down to uh, to the deck. I know that if he's a Swift F1, he's going to compress at high altitude. Is not going to be the best at moving. And of course, I don't even think he has an afterburner. I actually can't remember. Let me know in the comment section below. But um, I'm going to go after these guys, mostly because my teammate's there. Uh, because he's baiting them and I have a prime opportunity here to get some kills with the missiles and uh, you can see me prepping the missile I'm going to come through the clouds and hopefully come in at uh, a spot where I'm able to surprise my opponents So the Swift F1 looks like he's pretty pr getting pretty juicy pretty juicy boy I'm going to send a, a missile his way. It looks like it's going to connect and boom perfect I've got one missile left Swift's four kilometers away and who am I going to pick next? It looks like this MiG-15 here is paying a little bit of attention the other one doesn't seem to be, or maybe not, maybe yes. I'm just looking for the opponent who's not turning nearly as much. And it looks like this second MiG-15 was probably not the greatest option. I'm going to turn around again, look for the Swift, but I uh, can't see him. So I'm just going to engage if he's not there. I'm going to come in. It looks like I'm going to pick the Ish first.
first. And I'm going to send all guns blazing. The MiG doesn't have the greatest roll. And I magically pilot snipe him. I don't know how I did that. I'm going to go for altitude again. The Swift is closing in distance. So I need to be careful of the Swift. I'm going to turn around. Go into a little bit of a spiral climb. To try and throw off the Swift's aim. I'm going to go into a vertical. And then try and take the fight to the vertical. Because I know I can win it. Because the Swift is not a very maneuverable boy. I missed my deflection shot. And the Swift pulls away. Because he's got so much energy. But it looks like the Swift is deciding to go for a bit of a vertical fight. This could potentially work out in my favor, but looking at my speed, I don't really have any, and the Swift gets away once again. Do note, though, that there is a Swift F7 still in play. He is farming AI, which is fine by me, but I still need to help out this teammate here. 8 kilometers away is a fair distance, but of course, at 10.0, uh, 10 8.7, uh, that is still a doable distance, especially when your teammates are heading towards you. This MiG-15 is going to give the uh, J-29 some grief, and of course the J-29 can't really outturn the MiG-15 uh, unless he's going like less than 300 kilometers per hour. It's going to be really tough for him, and so I need the MiG-15 to commit a very fatal mistake. He did a little fucky-wucky, and now it's time for him to get in the Forever Box. I damage his tail, and the Forever Box is only a little J away, and uh, I'm just going to do that after I dodge this F1 again. I'm going to go again up into the vertical, and uh, barely, barely getting swiped there by the uh, Swift F1's 30mm cannons. And it looks like the F1 did a little bit of a fucky-wucky as well. So uh, into the Forever Box for you, young master Swift F1. I get some critical hits, I damage his tail. And uh, maybe it's time to finish it off, lead a little bit of better, and um, Swift F1's toast. All I had to do was sort of bide my time, be patient, and I managed to get myself kill number six. That is bloody insane. That was the most intense, probably, couple minutes of dogfighting that I've done in a very long time. So, we have this guy, we have another guy, and we have another guy left. It's very, very, you know, stakes are so high. It's, it's actually, you know, kind of spooky. MiG-15 above you, they can energy fight you however the hell they want. And of course, I've got four missiles and I can't just, you know, jettison like I would any other uh, sort of entity. Now, the Swift manages to get the J-29 and that's a really bad show for me because that means that there is a two versus one situation here. I'm uh, not looking very happy at this. I'm going to dive straight down and then change my direction so the Swift cannot get guns on me and it looks like he's just a little bit too much on the chonky side so i'm in a bit of a bad situation here in fact this is about as bad as it gets i'm going around and uh trying to get a nice missile kill here on the swift it's looking good i think the swift isn't paying attention and i managed to get a nice missile i'm not really sure where that came from but i have three missiles here and a mig-15 to def defeat I should also, also mention that uh, one of the MiG-15s that I engaged earlier was, uh, you know, crashed on landing, which was very, very good for me, giving me, that is kill number eight, going for kill number nine. The MiG-15 Biss here is making a couple of critical mistakes. He's well overblowing his energy, and it looks like if I can just play this properly, I can sit behind him all day and get all the kills that I want. You see... The bonus of having these extra missiles is that that extra weight reduces your acceleration, giving you a little bit of an edge in a dogfight. Now, it's not a great edge, but you know what? It's something kind of niche that you can kind of work with. It means that you don't have to use your air brakes as often, or at least you can keep that 101% throttle, because, you know, you've got to give that 101% effort. So, the MiG-15 is in a pretty sore spot here. A damaged MiG-15 is pretty hard to maneuver. And you can see that I'm even having to pop my air brakes out. I think he, maybe I've damaged his engine. Maybe I've damaged something else. I almost damaged my plane in that sort of merge there. Uh, and it looks like the MiG-15 is getting away. But, of course, I've got three missiles. I'm going to try it. I'm going to have some fun. Uh, see what happens. The MiG-15 pulls away for the first one. But that's okay because I've pretty much got him locked in on my sights. I'm going to go for a little spray, a little bit more damage, but it's only a matter of time before I get the better of this MiG-15. I'm pretty sure he's either out of energy, out of uh, something, but he's just so damaged that I have a really easy time here just sort of sitting over the top of him. You can see how much trouble he's having even just doing basic maneuvers, and all I need to do now is do a little bit of spray, control my uh, control my, bo my, my bombs, my guns, and uh, there goes the, the third missile. Again, a bit of a waste, but that's okay because the MiG-15 is about to go into the ground, and that will spell the end of this match, provided that I can land my shots. He bails, 
And that's nine kills. Nine damn kills. I've never gotten nine kills in my whole War Thunder career. And the G91 is the one that got it for me. So if you guys were looking for something to maybe perfect your 8.7s, my God, G91 R4 is your go-to. Both the one in the Italian and the German tech tree are both excellent. I've played both of them and I love both of them, especially with this battle rating stuff coming back. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Take care and I'll catch you next time.